Studio boss Howard Hughes loved slam-bang finishes on his crime pictures, and neophyte director Harold Daniels delivered the goods. That frantic finish in the L.A. River is one of my favorites, especially because of its ambiguity. Now, in movies of this era, the femme fatale, even ones that undergo a rare change of heart, generally are guilty of something and must pay the price mandated by the production code. Now, Joan Dixon merely walking off at the end feels a bit ahead of its time, like a movie from the 60s or 70s rather than one shot in the early 50s. Now, of course, anybody who's seen them might have expected giant ants to emerge from the L.A. storm drains to devour Dixon as she tries to escape. Now, I've had several people ask me where exactly is Joan Dixon going at the end of the film? And I tell them, well, she's headed across town to take a job as a singer at Dino's Lounge, which Dean Martin would open on the Sunset Strip in 1958, and which is exactly what the actress did once her acting career petered out. Now, Roadblock was originally intended for director Don Siegel, who turned in a brisk and entertaining job on The Big Steel, Robert Mitchum's comeback caper following his arrest for marijuana possession in 1948. But it was Harold Daniels who finally got the assignment. He had only directed three features before this, one of them the insanely bizarre 1949 production The Lawton Story, a religious exploitation picture produced by Carney showman Kroger Babb and co-directed by William One-Shot Bodine. Now, Daniels was a former actor who figured he'd have a longer career behind the camera. He brought Roadblock in ahead of schedule and under budget, but if he expected to earn more prestigious projects for his efforts, he was sorely mistaken. His follow-up features, Sword of Venus and Port Sinister, come nowhere close to the verve and vitality of Roadblock. Newsflash, journeyman directors need good writers and actors. There is, however, one legendary film on Harold Daniels' directing resume. In 1956, he was hired by American National Films to direct a picture called Bayou, a swampy backwoods melodrama starring Peter Graves and Lita Milan, shot on location in the Cajun country of Louisiana. United Artists distributed the film in 1957, and it did absolutely no business until years later when an enterprising showman named Mike Rips bought the film from UA. He hired one of the film's more colorful co-stars, crazy man Timothy Carey, to reprise his role as a crazed Cajun storekeeper whose rape of Lita Milan is the plot's big pivot point. Now, Rips filmed new footage of Carey graphically attacking an actress doubling for Milan, making sure to get plenty of exposed flesh in the process. He inserted these violent skin scenes, repackaged the whole thing under the title Poor White Trash, and sold it exclusively in the South, known euphemistically in the trade as the Chitlin Circuit. It turned out to be one of the highest grossing films of 1961. Now, Poor White Trash would also prove to be the biggest box office hit ever directed by Harold Daniels, out-earning such timeless classics as My World Dies Screaming and House of the Black Death, also known as Blood of the Man Devil. I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that he'd rather be remembered for Roadblock. Now, next week on Noir Alley, we jump from RKO over to Warner Brothers, leaving the trenches of B-movie making far behind. Instead, we'll be mingling with royalty as we present Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in the oddest of the four films they made together, Dark Passage. Now, as always, you're invited to get online and share your thoughts about today's movie or anything else noir-related on our Facebook page and Twitter feed. Until next week, see you in the shadows. <laughs>